My question is regarding Eden on Earth. Um, it's really inspiring to envision in the, um, on Earth. So we would like to know more about this beautiful future of our planet. Um, what would the uh, social system look like? Will the money system be replaced by something better, like a system based on abundance and love, where people offer their service and the product, uh, products to the community, and at the same time, they will have all they need to live on? Is this achievable within our generation? How do we begin to create um, Eden on Earth? We are so looking forward to it. Thank you, Master. I told you all this already from all the planet, so that you can drool about it. <laughs> and now if our planet catch up with a similar <laughs> spiritual elevation, then it will be like that too, yes? It will be like Eden on Earth where everyone has equal access to community service as well as a community resource and everything will be distributed evenly and everyone will be respected and loved and taken care of exactly like the next one or the last one or the first one. Yes, let's hope it happens soon, yes. And then we can uh, invent many, many machines, many other non-pollutant, apparatus so we can travel a million light years away from the earth and visit our neighbor planets and all that or even immigrate there. It would be more fun than what we are having right now. Yes. As soon as the human being begins to be more compassionate, more loving and more true to themselves, to their loving great self, to, to the God within themselves, then Nothing is impossible. Everything that they cannot even imagine will happen. Yes. Right now we're trying very hard, cost a lot of money to go to Mars, just take a little few little dirt to come back. No, that's nothing. In the future we just fly to every corner of the universe visiting anybody we want. You know, physically, also spiritually. Spiritually right now many of us are already visiting other planets. And that's just okay, that's just for us. But we could even invent many other uh, instruments so that we can fly all over the universe en masse together, like we're doing with airplane now, like uh, taking an airplane to Europe or taking an airplane to America. In the future, we will take in similar to airplane, but we will use our thought, power of the mind to control, and then we just go anywhere, not just uh, on this planet not just a neighbor in Mars or Moon, but farther, much farther in the corner of the universe. And we will discover so many things, so many beautiful, interesting corner of uh, our galaxy or the next galaxy that will take our breath away. Right now we're just like crawling on the, on the ground. <laughs> we fly a little bit in the cloud, but that's it, you know, it's not much interesting. Anyway, well, I'm also hoping to see that day, you know, while I'm alive. But if not, it's okay, it don't matter. We can fly ourselves individually. Thank you. How to improve our love for all beings so we won't hurt others physically, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually? How is this related to our spiritual practice? Thank you, Master. The reason we have to love others and consider their benefit before ourselves, it is because that is noble way to behave. It's the way that we should behave. It is the only attitude that we should have. If you want to improve your <laughs> capability of being compassionate and considerate, then just imagine that you are in their shoes. Try to be in their shoes. Imagine if it were you, then you know what other needs, yeah? And help accordingly. It's very simple. Try to imagine that you are that person. For a living, what I do is um, I work, I'm a blood collector, so I work in a pathology department of a hospital. 
What collector? Blood collector. Oh, blood. You know, yes. blood tests when you have a blood yes, test. Yes, yes, yes. So, um, you know, I'm dealing with with a lot of sick people during mm. the day, all day, mm. mm-hmm. um, and I'm just wondering, is there, apart from repeating the five names when I'm sort of dealing with each patient, is yeah. there another way I can protect myself against? Oh, you don't stuff? protect yourself. It's okay. You mean mm. from the sickness or from the yeah? Energy? I just yeah, because sometimes you just get some patients and. You know, you just want to. You worry. Like, not okay. Want to go near them. Okay. You, you know? uh, yeah. You re- repeat the five names and wash your hand thoroughly, mm. or anywhere that you contact with the patient yeah. immediately afterward. Yeah. Well, that. Yeah, I do that anyway. Yeah. That's yeah. What you have to do. Get some, uh, if you can, at at the end of the day or any time, some lemon. Lemon. Yeah, lemon nearby. You can wash it with lemon. Okay. Yeah. It's uh, cut the energy better. Mm. Cut the psychic connection. Lemon and salt. Okay? Mm. Yeah. But a little, little. Just a few drops and some salt, yeah? And quickly and then rinse. And then shake your hand seven times. After that, yeah. Okay. To cut the psychic connection. If that makes you feel better, do that. Mm-hmm. Okay? Yeah. It does help. Mm? If you don't feel so good, do that. Yeah. All right? Mm-hmm. <coughs> Okay? Uh-huh. Yeah. Not exactly seven times, but more than seven times. After seven, you can shake more, you know, whenever you can, but at least seven times, yeah? Yeah, okay. Shake vigorously, you know. Shake it out. Wherever. Normally, you touch it with your hands, right? Yeah. So wash after washing it. Shake it as soon as possible. Big water, yeah? A lot. Okay? Yes, just um, because when we work together, we're, it's so easy. We misunderstand each other, even between initiatives. Yes. Um, can you tell tell us more about that? How to um, treat each other without this, without too much emotion? Mm. Always put love in per- first place. Mm. Think about it first before you want to say something. Consider yourself the other person. What would he think? Why would he have done that? Or why would she have talked like that? Yes, he might have have some reason. And if you don't know at all, then you sit and talk together, you know. You know, I, I know, brother, I didn't really know what you mean, you know, maybe you didn't mean to hurt me or hurt the group, but could you please explain why you say that or why you did that? Huh? Okay? Everybody have to talk, talk it out, yeah? When you misunderstand, then you ask again, did you really mean that or did you mean this or did I misunderstand you? Okay? You, you will find it many times, surprisingly, the person doesn't even know what you, <laughs> what you meant. They don't understand why you were so upset or something like that. Yes. But it's, uh, it's, I don't know why you're upset with each other because, well, I don't know, maybe you, you could, could be when you're working in a rush or something, in, in some... Uh, difficult situation, and it seemed like the communication doesn't go well. That that you could be very upset, very upsetting. Don't forget, we all have personalities and characters and background. You know, it's a lot of stuff. <laughs> and ego, of course. <laughs> yeah, ego, of course. This is a problem. And uh, whenever assigned some job, and you have to make clear instruction, eh? and if anything go wrong, then you have to go back to each other and discuss it, yeah? And tell the problem. Don't just try to fix everything by yourself when you cannot. Hmm? Maybe sometime ruin the atmosphere or ruin the job. But, you know, this is just worldly speaking. It's all karma at work, okay? Karma between each other, karma of the world, karma of the suffering of the planet. It makes us like that, okay? Uh, even by me also, you know, with someone I feel more peaceful, with someone else I would feel less peaceful. Or with someone I would work better or understand better, quicker, and with someone else I would have to explain a lot and still doesn't understand or doesn't want to. It's okay, whatever, try to do the best. <laughs> try to do the best. And even if you cannot solve it, just forgive. Yeah. Uh, maybe, you see, all of you are not expert in, uh, in, in going out and doing things that you are not doing normally, see? So it's about to happen that maybe you don't do it well. Hmm? 
like uh, before you just uh, stay home and take care of your family and children, then you do well, yes? But when you go out and you're assigned to do something like um, some charity work or go out and deal with some authority, uh, then you're not uh, well uh, experienced, yeah? Then maybe you do something wrong. Same with your brother or other sister, yes? And they might do things that you don't feel like is correct, just because they don't have experience in that. And they just try their best. So whatever happened, we just accept it, okay? Talk with each other, but then accept it. What else to do? We're still brothers and sisters. We're still the, you know, the most trusted among us. Eh? We can trust each other here. Hmm? Okay? <laughs> right. Very difficult to work together, especially when you do something for the world. If you do things at home, no problem. Or if you do for yourself, yeah? Or a normal thing, then it's no problem. But once you want to work to benefit this planet or the world, then the, the karma set in. Yes? And even uh, the one you get on very well before suddenly don't get on well anymore. <laughs> okay? Hmm? Con nghĩ nói chuyện này thường nó rất là khó nói rồi ạ. Vâng. Khi mà mình yêu một cái mình làm một cái gì và với cái tình thương thật sự ấy, thì lúc ấy chắc chắn là có kết quả mà mình cũng không mong chờ nhưng mà kết quả nó đến rồi ạ. Cái tình thương mình không thể lừa dối được ai. Không thể lừa dối được ai ví dụ mình ở bên cạnh đến người ta có giả dối với mình mình cũng vẫn nhận được ngay. Thế yeah. nên là cái điều quan trọng là mình yêu thương và làm với cái gì cũng phải làm với cái thật tâm và cái sự thật sự là thương yêu ở bên trong thật sự thì lúc nào nó cũng có một cái rất là rất là tốt rồi ạ. Ừ, ừ. Mọi cái mà đến tất cả những cả khó khăn hay cái gì cũng mất kể một cái gì nữa ừ. thì mình cứ làm với cái tình thương thật sự ở bên trong thì lúc nào nó cũng là thế. Và con thấy rằng là khi mình sinh ra bản chất của con là sinh ra để được sinh ra từ tình thương từ từ lúc mà con mới sinh ra đúng là sư phụ sinh ra con bằng tình thương cho nếu như con muốn được lớn lên thì con cũng phải lớn lên bằng chính cái tình thương ở bên trong của con con muốn phát triển thì con phải tự ở trong và đấy là cái chân thật nhất thì cái này nó con khó nói lắm sư phụ ạ khi tình thương thì rất là khó nói nhưng mà con nghĩ mỗi một cái gì mà con làm là cái tình thương con thấy là có kết quả rất nhiều yeah. và con thấy cái tình thương nó rất là mênh mông và rất là thích rất là tự do con thấy con rất là thích con rất thích cái tình thương này mà không... sao ở nhà thương ông xã về ông chịu không À, con thì không có con chia tay lâu lắm ở rồi. Ở mình hả? Và con ở một mình với con okay. trai con ạ. À. Okay. Sao bây giờ làm gì với nó? Tại sao phải đi làm nhà hàng? À, con vừa kinh doanh ạ. Chủ nhà hàng hả? Vừa kinh doanh um, tích loại vải, quần à. áo á. Ok, ok. Thế xong rồi con lại làm thêm cả nhà hàng okay, vì con được. quen rồi. Ừ. Nên không phải làm cái đấy nặng nề nữa. Yeah. Và, và con cũng muốn làm cái này là cái lúc cuối cùng này sư phụ ban cho con một cái ân điển rất là lớn để con được làm cái nhà hàng mà 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 cùng chung với cái lý tưởng bây giờ với sư phụ được phụng sự là con thích nhất con nghĩ rằng không có cái gì khó khăn khi mà mình cứ phụng sự đi cứ phụng sự đi làm đi chẳng bao giờ con nghĩ ngợi về cái chuyện gì nó khó đến với con cả <cười> ok very good yes I have to be positive like that à, tức là mình khẳng định thì tốt ok mm. very good Yeah, I am proud of you. <laughs> it's a, it's a high time now. Even if it's not for the planet, it's high time. I said to you many times that it's high time that the human beings elevate themselves into the next level. Yes, of uh, who they are, step higher and higher toward their true self. Yeah, loving, compassion, greatness not uh, sit here and thinking of how to kill the chicken eh? and how to hook the fish and eat them while they are, you know, suffering. Yes, it's about time, it's high time that we human beings behave in a more noble manner and not in a way that uh, liken ourselves to those that we call wild beasts, you know, like tiger lions. Tiger lions, they kill their victim quick and eat because they're hungry, because they can't plant soy. Yes. But if they have a choice, they eat vegetarian too. You see, tiger lions are just similar to dogs and cats that we have. They're just bigger. See, they all have fangs, see? The fangs are to catch the other animals. But 
Dogs and cats, as we know, our dogs and cats are vegetarian happily, healthily. Yes? So same with tigers and lions. They had no choice. If they had choice, they would be happily vegetarian. It has been proven many times. And now also scientists already discover that. Yeah, even some zoos, they give uh, lion and tiger and all those more vegetable now because they, they know they need it even. Need it, not just because of moral issue, but they do really need vegetable also they live healthier. Even the vicious animals we call wild beasts or vicious beasts. So if we call ourselves human, we should not behave in such a way that liken us to the so-called vicious beast and wild beast. You know, it's really not a very honorable thing to do, huh? We should not feel very proud of ourselves and call them wild beasts. Yeah? <laughs> what are we? Yeah? I keep asking this question all the time. If we do the same like them, what do we call ourselves? Wild humanoid? <laughs> A beastie humanoid? A wild beastie humanoid? Yeah, when when come to think about it, isn't that ironic that we do the same like the wild beasts and we call them vicious animals? When we want to curse somebody or humiliate somebody, we say, you, you animals, you, you know, you like animals. You like animals even, not even wild beasts yet. Yeah? And we behave like wild beasts, the way we kill other beings to eat, just like them. Why we call them wild beasts? Because that's the way they behave, see? Because they don't behave like our domesticated dogs, the tigers, the lions, they catch other animals to eat, yes? So we call them wild beasts, yeah? Vicious animals, yes. And we do the same, no? Huh? What's the reason calling them wild beasts? Because they catch other animals to eat, because they're wild. They're not tame, like our dog eating on a plate, you know, pellet, yeah, or veggie bones. So we call them wild beasts, right? Opposite to our domesticated animals, you know, pets. We call our dogs pets, yeah, a rabbit, pets, yeah. Yeah, and the lion, wild beast, yeah. Yeah, what would we call ourselves? <laughs> you know what I mean? Same, no difference. I think we're worse because we make them into a crop. Okay? Yes, yes. And yeah, put chemical in them. Yeah. Even more cruel. Cruel. Than the then the. Wild yes, that's right. The wild beasts, they eat only when they're hungry and the uh, field. And they choose the weak and the old, the one that could not run with the whole flock. That means the weak one. You know, they eliminate that. But we kill anything. Yes, we run deep into the sea to fish the fish up. We shoot into the sky to get the birds down. We go into the jungle to get the wild beast to eat. Yes, wild beast or non-wild beast, we eat them all. Yeah, and then call the other wild beast. I don't know who's the wild and who's the beast. Yeah, yeah. All right, but let's hope that the beast, whoever that can be, we turn around, eh? We have a film, you know, called Beauty and the Beast. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, gentle giant. Yeah. And he turned around, eh? He become no more beastie, huh? Yeah, so maybe every dream come true, huh? Very good, eh? One day, huh? You see how many undeveloped souls in the whole universe. And human, you know, they're getting less and less every day. They, they take anti-baby pills. <laughs> <laughs> they don't allow the soul to come down here to work out the karma and to go up anymore. Very difficult to become a human, yeah? It's not easy to be a human, understand? Yes. So many souls are hanging around waiting to be a human. You cannot. Not only um, limited like this, but the affinity has to write, you see? Like if you want to come down here, your future parents have to have affinity with you, good or bad. The person have affinity with you, can be your parents, but they already developed, they're already gone. You have no chance to come down. Do you understand me? It's not like you want to come down, you come down. So if when you are human life, I have an opportunity to be a human, 
and you don't work out your karma, you don't finish it, and you don't develop quick to become a higher level uh, God, nah? then it's it's very difficult chance to come back again. A long time. You have to sit. Nothing bad happened to you. You don't go to hell, nobody punishes you, nothing. But you sit there and wait and just like sit in kindergarten, you know, and nothing happened to you. You understand me? Yes. Nothing good. And you'll be very sorry. So even in this physical life, if we suffer a little bit, you know, uh, physically, or if we have to do some hard labor or suffering, misery or anything like that, still have to be patient and work it out because the chances are very rare. Some people don't come back to be a human for many thousand years because there's not, no chance for them to do it. If to be in this life, you have to either meet friends or enemies or somebody before that had affinity with you in the former life. If they are on the physical plane, yeah? Do you understand? Then you have to have the permission to be your parents or not, if they want to or not. Because there are many other affinities that they have. They take the priority. Do you understand me? Yeah, and, and, and a parent can only have many sons and many daughters. <laughs> and nowadays they take anti baby pills and you have to wait longer. Hmm? The list is long. No? Wait until that parent come back again and have another five sons or five daughters again, then you might be. Maybe it's your turn <laughs> or not. Oh dear, people are so stupid. I keep telling them, but they, some people are just so stupid. So You see, the problem is uh, the society is a big uh, infectious <laughs> system, you know? One tell the others, and if you don't have strong enough moral standard, then you sway. Yeah, I give sway, and one day you lean to them a little bit, a little bit, and then one day you go with them. Huh? And that's what the king of Maya wants. He spread all this wrong conception. Yeah, He used his um, subordinate to come up to this world to try to sway people like that. One day you don't sway, next day you sway, next day you sway, and then you're dumb, you're finished. That's why you have to keep your moral standard strong, like protect your own life. Otherwise, it's easy to, you know, to be tempted and do wrong. You see, sometimes the subordinate of the devil comes into this world. He uh, looks like us. I told you already that the astral beings can manifest themselves as human beings for a certain time on earth. And during that certain time, one week, two weeks, one month, two months, he tried to influence people, the one with the weak moral standard. You see what I mean? If you are a hundred percent, then he cannot do anything. He tried, he tried, and he failed, he knows it. Or he just leaves you alone, yeah? But if he see you maybe only sixty percent, fifty percent morally correct, then he try to shake you up. If you are hundred percent morally correct, he cannot corrupt you. He know he leave you alone. He just go to those a little bit weak, and maybe you have sixty percent today, and he keep tempting you, and then you lose, and you have only fifty percent. And next day you have forty percent, and next week he come back again. You have thirty percent, and slowly you lose. Do you understand me? So you have to know where you're going. You have to know what is good and keep to it. Even if you lose your life, you keep it. Because losing this life is nothing compared to what you lose afterward if you lost your moral standard. Because if we practice like Kwanin Method and we keep to the inside the fence of this moral standard, okay, then even if you die, your soul is free. You don't have to come back to this similar body and suffer again. Or you don't have to go to the astral body, which is similar to this body, but that body will be burned in hell and, and be tortured with all different kind of, of, of terrifying you know, punishment. It's uh, painful. Just like here in this world, if somebody stab you with a knife in your physical body, then you feel very, very painful. You understand? Imagine, in the astral body, you feel the same like that, but your body won't die. And it keeps stopping and pain forever like that. You know, not one time, two times, but keep burning either forever, or stopping forever, or do all kind of 
cut in forever like that. Can you imagine? Here, they cut you one time, two times, maybe, and then you bleed to death. You finish, yeah? And then you don't suffer no more. But in the astral body, you don't die. And you feel the same pain like in the physical body. Do you understand? That is the difference. And that's what many people don't understand. They don't know it. They think, okay, well, I don't see any punishment now, I don't see any consequence. I continue to do bad thing or killing, I don't care, who can tell me what? They don't know what's waiting, you see? It's not losing the physical body that you should be worried. It's losing the freedom of the soul. See, if we die in this physical body, our soul free because you are morally correct and you are in the higher level, yeah? Okay? No devil can have any excuse to come and tell you that, mm, you made this trouble, I can take you, because you are not correct. You see what I mean? No excuse for him. So your soul is free. You go to third level, fourth level, you come back for wherever you want, yeah? But if you fall into the astral body and case in it and fall into hell, wow, terrible, torturing, forever, for a long time, and the body don't die, that's a problem. You cannot be free from it. So the soul be encased in that and suffer, suffer consciously. Do you understand me? But that's what the devil wants, like to tempt people so that we stay here forever, so that he can control us all the time. You know what I mean? Because if we are gone, we live alone, no? lonely, no? And nobody to, to tempt, nobody to seduce, and nobody to make trouble. No theater for him to watch, yeah? Because if we listen to him, then the whole theater come up. For example, you two sit together nicely, huh? And maybe one of you are highly standard, the other are not. And the devil come to the, the weaker one and talk something, make her fight with this one. <laughs> and then they're both fighting together, and this one get wounded, and this one lose some spiritual merit, and he's happy. Oh, I like that. You see what I mean? Otherwise, there's nobody who play play theater for him. Imagine the king of, of, of devil just sit there alone, nobody to harass, nobody to tempt, nobody to control. Can you imagine? Hmm? Yeah, that's why he make trouble. So that the theater keep go on, and then he he likes that. So if we are clever, we keep to our standard. Okay, we have to because that's our salvation in this world. Once you are in the third level, at least you're free, yeah? You do what you want. But over there you will never do anything wrong, because no temptation. Everything just correct and good. You see what I mean? So wait until you go up there, and then you can do what you want, okay? Right now, keep strict, yeah? Standard of living. Even if I'm not there, even nobody look at you, even nobody know what you're doing, you must keep to your standard of Moral, okay? Yes. First, self-respect. Yes. Second, freedom of the soul. Third, benefit everybody else, okay? Including yourself. All right. Any more question? No? Good, huh? Uh, there are a couple of kinds, uh, several kinds of dreams. Uh, the normal dreams is that uh, just uh, random, you know, uh, very uh, unimportant events, like uh, we have seen something in the daytime, or we think of something, or we are influenced by the surrounding or what we experience, and then when we sleep, um, it keep like replaying it like a record player, yeah. And that is a, just a very random dream. It's no meaning, yeah. Uh, the second dream kind of dream is that um, uh, maybe it's kind of vision, you know? You can see it so clearly as if it's life, it is real. So these yes. are like spiritual kind of dream. Hmm? Yeah. And it has a meaning like, okay, you have gone to heaven, you see this and that saints, or you do something, and these are vision. And there's another kind of dream which uh, like a message dream, you know, which some people interpret it. You know, you can buy a book of dream, and then if you remember your dream, and then you, you uh, 
turn the pages and check it out, what is the meaning. <laughs> okay, yeah. there are many books about dreams, if you remember them. Yes. Yeah. yeah. They ex- thank you. They, yeah. I think uh, you make some of my dream come true, and thank you very much. Ah, that's, this, this is, <laughs> these are the forewarning dreams, yes. They are like the sign, yeah, it uh, will give you a message or something, yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you a secret. When I was Rama of India, I went to Germany. And I taught some people that. Maybe that's why we had good affinity. <laughs> you know the story of Rama, right? Uh, not really. No, no, no. Like you don't remember? Oh, no, you were not there. <laughs> when I was in, in, in Hong Kong, we watched together a film mm. of the life of Rama. Mm. Rama is one of the famous Indian teacher, spiritual teacher of all time, long time ago. <laughs> he has a wife who has been kidnapped by uh, the other tribe, you know, because he likes her. <laughs> or a story like this, huh? Mm. He was, he's a prince, yeah? And he was beloved by, of course, by all the concubines of the, the king even. even. Mm. But there is his, another wife of the king, not his mother, no, stepmother, has also a son. And then uh, people tell her bad thing, you know, say, oh, you have to make your son a king, otherwise when Rama become king, you are nothing, you are nobody. Yeah? You might be uh, excised somewhere or become commoner and your son may be killed, be nothing or... Yeah, you've been nobody. Right now the king loves you because you're still young and... But your son, if, if he's not a king, then you'll be nobody. So she doesn't want it. She did not want to because she loved him too. She loved that uh, king, you know, the Rama. The Rama was born before her son and she loved him just like her son. Mm-hmm. And they even say, you love him more than your son, and this is no good. <laughs> so every day talk, talk, evil talk, you know, and then she, she's done it, you know. She, you know, they cause some trouble, make something, and then the king uh, fired the, the first son, you know, uh, and exiled him somewhere else, mm-hmm. yeah. And make the other one become uh, the crown prince, later prince, later become king, you know. But because they also love each other, the brother, you know, and the Indian people, you know, they're so moral, <laughs> morally high. So he, the, the brother, the youngest step brother, who became king later, but doesn't rule the kingdom. He, he, okay, because his brother has gone away, he don't know what, I cannot do anything. So he put his shoes on the thorn, the, the big brother's shoe on the thorn, the one who's supposed to be king but exiled, you know. They put on the throne and he just stand nearby every day and doing business like he's doing it for him only. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yes, it's a very nice story. Uh, if I had the film again, i let you watch it. And then this brother is even more striking. He, ne- he never, he never know his sister, he never know the face because he's so respectful. He doesn't want to have any uh, lustful thought about his brother's wife, so he never even looked at her face. He only looked at the, the, the toe. So whenever he see her, he recognized only the toe, and, and that's how he recognized her later on when she got lost. And then he came rescue or something. He looked at the toe, the, the feet, and he recognized her. That's my sister. Never once look at her face. Yeah, or any other part except the toe. That respectful, you know, that's moral. Yeah, that is one part of the story. I don't want to spoil it and tell you everything. <laughs> okay, well, never mind. I tell you a little bit. <laughs> you want? Make appetite for us. <laughs> okay, okay. And then, uh, and then this wife is very so beautiful, yeah. And one of the the person, other person somewhere, you know, envy her and then took her, kidnap her and want to make her a wife. And you know what she does? She don't even give in, so she don't even want anything to do with him, because she loves her husband, Rama, only. Not only her husband, but also spiritual master. How would you ever give it up? If it's a husband, maybe, but not master as well, you know? So in India, the, the relationships are like that, you know? Even if the, uh, uh, the master married to somebody, you know, 
And uh, but if the person know, because sometimes it's the destiny. A master has to marry. You understand? It is not like everybody has to become a monk to be a master. That is not the problem of the universe. <laughs> they don't care about that. You see what I mean? They don't care about that. <laughs> Even if you are married to a master, you know, you don't look upon him as an equal or as your husband. You will sit at his feet and revere him. You know, apart from being a wife, you are a disciple as well, and they really respect the master. I saw many in India like that. And one one master, you know, in India. He was married before, you know, and then his father died, and then he took up the name him as a successor, the son, and he already married. And now his wife, I saw it, you know, to sit out at his feet like everybody else. And when, even inside the house, when she talked to him, he sit at his feet. She sit at his feet and ask like a disciple. You understand? She doesn't throw a temper and tantrum and say, I'm your wife and you have to do this. No, 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 not at all. Not in India like that. They are so well educated in spiritual matter. Uh, the Rama's wife was kidnapped by somebody. Yeah, and for fourteen years. Fourteen years long. Yes, and all she does was she sit under the tree all day, all night. She don't let him go. She don't go into his palace or his bed. Now she just sit there right in front of everybody. Yeah, so it's nothing much he can do. You know, he cannot force her. I don't know how he wouldn't force her. But he said, okay, if you say you see, something like, if you love me and you want to do anything with me, then do it right here, right in front of everybody. <laughs> Show it. So he, he's so embarrassed. He's also a king of another nation. Yeah? I feel a little embarrassed, so he don't do anything. She sit there all day long, all day, all night. You know? She don't do anything else. So just the same. You know? She's also a spiritual person, you see? So because of that also he respects her, you understand? And so nothing happened. So when he came back home, my husband jealous, you know, and thinking, how it happened? How could it possible that fourteen years that he no, don't touch you? <laughs> so she said, yes, never. So I say, have to prove it, you know. Maybe not just for him, but for everybody to to respect her again, you know, in her here, her country. So they make a fire and make her enter it. And if it doesn't burn, then she is pure. And it doesn't burn her. A uh, legend, you know, in the stories like that. And what surprised me was that at that time it seemed like they already have UFO or something, because in the story it described that that guy came to kidnap her in a flying chariot. Mm -hmm. At that time, many thousand years ago, how we have any airplane? You understand? Yes. Unless we, you see, at that time we were already civilized. As I have told you, we had been civilized before, and then we destroy, you know, the the human destroy their own civilization. And then we we'll begin again for nothing. Yeah, unless it was the story of that time. You see what I mean? Or oh, there's a UFO, you know, like an alien kidnapper. Yeah, because flying chariot, you know, in the sky, come and fly, fly there and kidnap her and brought up to the sky flying. <laughs> yeah, in Vietnam we also have that story about flying chariot. But people now they read it, they thought it's just a fairy tale, you know, so they didn't bother. But I, I don't think so. It might be true, you know. It could have been an alien or there was a, a, another civilization, you know. Oh, we have been civilized at that time. So later he defeated that guy, you know, and took his wife back. And then she has to go through fire, the burning fire, to prove her innocence. And she, she's proof. So they're back together happily ever after again. The Rama, he played only that film. Because after that, people re revere him like a real master, a real Rama, so he don't dare play any other thing. <laughs> yeah. He played so well just once, and so he didn't want to ruin. You know, suppose uh, he's like that and then playing some uh, wary or shooting people, then what would people think? You know, Rama go shoot people? <laughs> yeah, I heard that. That's the only film he played. He don't, he don't want to play any other film at all. Probably go into a forest and meditate or something, huh? <laughs> Become a real Rama, <laughs> a real yogi. That film is really a very good film. I wish they just uh, distribute it all over the world, you know, Americans would see it. <laughs>
So we would like to know more about this beautiful future of our planet. Um, what would the uh, social system look like? Will the money system be replaced by something better, like a system based on abundance and the love, where people offer their service and the product, uh, products to the community, and at the same time, they will have all they need to live on? Is this achievable within our generation? How do we begin to create um, Eden on Earth? We are so looking forward to it. Thank you, Master. I told you all this already from all the planet, so that you can drool about it. <laughs> and now, if our planet catch up with a similar <laughs> spiritual elevation, then it will be like that too. Yes, it will be like Eden on Earth where everyone has equal access to community service as well as a community resource and everything will be distributed evenly and everyone will be respected and loved and taken care of exactly like the next one or the last one or the first one. Yes, let's hope it happens soon, yes. And then we can uh, invent many, many machines, many other non-pollutant, apparatus so we can travel a million light years away from the earth and visit our neighbor planets and all that or even immigrate there. It would be more fun than what we are having right now. Yes. As soon as the human being begins to be more compassionate, more loving and more true to themselves, to their loving great self, to, to the God within themselves, then Nothing is impossible. Everything that they cannot even imagine will happen. Yes. Right now we're trying very hard, cost a lot of money to go to Mars, just take a little few little dirt to come back. No, that's nothing. In the future we just fly to every corner of the universe visiting anybody we want. You know, physically, also spiritually. Spiritually right now many of us are already visiting other planets. And that's just okay, that's just for us. But we could even invent many other uh, instruments so that we can fly all over the universe en masse together, like we're doing with airplane now, like uh, taking an airplane to Europe or taking an airplane to America. In the future, we will take in similar to airplane, but we will use our thought, power of the mind to control, and then we just go anywhere, not just uh, on this planet not just a neighbor in Mars or Moon, but farther, much farther in the corner of the universe. And we will discover so many things, so many beautiful, interesting corner of uh, our galaxy or the next galaxy that will take our breath away. Right now we're just like crawling on the, on the ground. <laughs> we fly a little bit in the cloud, but that's it, you know, it's not much interesting. Anyway, well, I'm also hoping to see that day, you know, while I'm alive. But if not, it's okay, don't matter, we can fly ourselves individually. Thank you.